so we can get ourselves prepared for before tomorrow night to try to get us all on the same page and know what we're all talking about and go from there. So does anybody have any questions for Donna or Mel or Mike or Ned? Yes. To get things cleared up. Kevin. Is there a deadline to
a match with in kind, which means we do the work and it's not hired out. I don't know if we would have to bid our part of it. Oh, yeah. Do you know? Do you specify know? what part, portion of it you would be able to bid? Right. Because the contractor isn't going to go in there and bid on that without knowing exactly what they're going to do and what they're not going to do. We won't ever get a bid from the contractor. Because they, they get a bid document. It's going to have specifically how many feet of trench, how many feet of board, how many, you know. And that's how they bid it out. So if the city decides to do X feet of work, then that has to be in that bid document. Write a uh, spec book for the project that the contractors bid off of? Yeah, we will. And we'll put together a bid tab for all the line items that the contractor will go through and complete that work. And that can be any contractor, like say Kevin Davis Plumbing could bid on it. Well, it's got to be an open bid, so yes. everybody's got the right. And, okay. And then the council would approve, along with the funding agency, what contractor, you know. It's yes. supposed to be the lowest, you know, the lowest reliable bid, but there are some circumstances. Where right. They probably have to be bonded too. I mean, they have to get a, anytime you do a public works project, you have to get a bond. Okay. Well, I'd like to see a lot of this done in house. We've got city employees. If they're not, if they're not qualified to do it, then what do we got them for? We're laying water lines. Oh, wow. Don't they have jobs? I don't do know they? that that was their specific job that when we hired them that they were to do water lines. Well, I, I don't know that it's their specific job, but I do think that there's a lot of this that we can do in house. We have the we have the equipment to do it and save ourselves a lot of money. I mean, we have backhoes, we wear trenchers, and do a lot of that ourselves. And I understand that. And save a lot of money. I understand that. Instead of just How that, that's my to... big my big deal about this. We talked about trying to do some of this in house, and now it's just been get it done. And I, I I think we need to slow down and figure out how we can save some money on this deal instead of just turning in a three point one million dollar note and hoping we can pay for it. Yeah, I agree with you, and I'm percent sure. And then we go to the meeting at Wichita. We was going to do in-house. And then we go to a meeting in Wichita, and we come back, and not point my finger, but right then and there, Don Heller was hired. No ifs, ands, or but. He was hired. He was well, yeah, going to have, some, we gotta have somebody to lead us on we this gonna, That's true, we do. So we have a leader. That's who we hired. We that's leader. right. So whenever he is and telling the city boys they're doing something wrong or whatever, I mean, his bill's going to add up. And the, so that $3.1 million could possibly be used pretty quick. But I know where you're coming from, but it's got to be done right. I understand that, but it doesn't take a lot of time to just to pipe together. No, that's right. So. I guess the reason I'm a little bit upset is we have moved forward. I felt like we was all on the same page moving forward together, well, as, a, together as a group. And then all of a sudden, it's like, whoa, well, wait a minute. You know, I mean, there's a lot of time spent between Don Heller and Mel and Mike on this already when, I don't know, the hours. We've already spent a lot of money and time for these guys to figure this project out. Oh, and, you know, a couple of weeks ago or a month ago, Don Miller stood there and said, if we're going to go forward with this, I need to know you're on board. And I remember even commenting that what you're saying is we can't come back and throw a glitch in this to stop the process. I mean, we've got... We're going to commit to this. We've got to commit. We haven't signed anything, so we can stop. We can stop doing any talk. Nothing's been signed. 
Well, so you can dollar. stop anything and, and at some point... I get point, that, Troy. Well, at some point when you're looking for something... But what I'm saying is you need we to were on the about. same page at one point. And we have stood here and spent hours on this thing. Yep. And, you know, Don stood there and said... Are we all on the same page, basically, is what he was saying. And we all sat there and said yes. If I, don't, if I remember correctly, you three ran for this council position on the fact that you were going to do something about our water situation. You three were on the same... Yep. But that didn't say great for city, either. No, but you campaigned for it. Well... Trying to fix the solution and going broke building, I think that's Okay, but when you went to the point. water conference, you guys came back and said, We see the writing on the wall. This is the way we have to go. Troy didn't go, and Kevin didn't go. Bobby got me which okay. Bobby went. Bobby went. And that's what we thought when this initial project started. We were walking about 750000 up. And I thought we were coming up. I think that. that is what Lewis ended up spending. I don't think we thought we would ever get by with that. And I believe that was for the nitrate. The then, then all of a sudden it jumped to 1.2, and then the next figure was 1.8, and then it was 2. Point something, and now it's 3.1. In a matter of about four weeks, the five, six. Yeah, and we all want. We want to do something. Line. We've got to do something. I think maybe during our proposal there, we all want top of the line. We would all spend top of the line if it was a good deal. What do you mean a good deal? Well, I mean, you're, we, you, we all want to see, all we want to do is see the interest rate and, and know what it's going to cost every meter person. Do we know that yet? Well, you, 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 you passed the rates last time. Right, we did pass the rates. But yeah. how many meters are actually in town? What did I tell you today? 635. And out of them on an average month, how many are delinquent? You delinquent? Yeah, out of the city. I shut them off if they're delinquent. Well, then the rest of us got to pick. I mean, that all goes no, up. No, they don't. They have to collect that before they get turned back anywhere, on. Is it increase? Is it, is it anywhere near twenty dollars per month? I tell them my bill. Something. Okay. Did you bring my bill? I have a, an Excel spreadsheet that I made. Of everybody around this table, except no one because they didn't have it. And plus, um, Vicki and my mom. And if you all give permission for everybody else to see your each other's stuff, then I'll pass this out. And there's a variety of different people with uh, different types of usage. You can see if you water your yard and have a garden or something, you're going to pay more for it. But really, the, the rates are going to go up. No matter. Right. We're We've got to do something about our rates, boys, guys, girls, whatever. Citizens, we got to do something about it. The rates that we had and are currently using do not pay for the operations and maintenance of our water system as it is. The only reason we've been able to get by with that is because the one employee who's paid out of it is deployed right now. So we have not paid much of the salary out of it.
which if you're buying bottled water or even gallons of water to drink for drinking water, that'll be in up pretty quick for drinking. Ned, that water, them two wells, test wells out there that you drilled, that is 1.2 parts per million nitrates, correct? They're not quite that low, Bob. They're not that low? So 
us a slow that we're, we don't do something with them. Through the state, you know, step up and want an explanation of why we're proceeding. We don't do anything. We probably get, you know, I'm sure the progression of things that we go through to tell us that we need to, need to fix the problem. Worst case scenario. You guys are going to jail. There could be fines.
my understanding that uh, the 30% loan forgiveness is pretty much guaranteed this year, but it may not be so available next year and perhaps not at all or so. We have an opportunity for as much as what a million dollars off of this now that may not be available to us later if we decide to not do it now and we choose to do it later. But do we have to do the whole project to get to get this loan? Or can we do like no. half of it this year? But you're not going to get the loan forgiveness next year. We don't know that. Possibly may not. Perhaps. Perhaps not. That's just but information that I've been given. I felt like I needed to give you that information. Right. Well. I, I, I truly appreciate that. I'm just asking, is if, is if we say we only borrowed a million. We reapply for the second part of the project, I say. Right. But, I mean, we could still get 33% forgiveness we're in compliance, on that Once we're in compliance, anything we do after that, we're probably not going to be applicable for that Love application because this is because we're out of compliance that they right. build this amount of money for us at this rate with that loan forgiveness. Yes. Uh, one thing about you were talking about uh, you know a couple of wells here that we need to factor in that if we would have a a, a well from a larger production well out for whatever reason it's just about lightning or rebuild or something like that. You know, two two production wells and, and uh, the other wells would you know even on a hot day would be alright, but if we lose one of those we would, wouldn't be able to meet our, our, our needs, you know, probability or a chance we might not uh, on some of these hot days we had. So that's something to keep in mind. And I think uh, Mike worked on your when you're talking about the, the wells you were talking about uh, the ground storage you still think that's something we would probably need to be able to go this way with them yes uh, what we've got budgeted for right now is an 80,000 gallon ground storage tank and that's going to help with these high demand days kind of knock the peak off where you can draw down on those high demand but also fire flow issues and stuff like that. So that's something you guys got to consider on these floors too. Is, you know, there's always a chance that, you know, you're always talking about the demand, you know, daily use, but you got to look at fire flows and stuff like that too if you start looking at taking other wells out of offline and such things like that. We talked about being able to, if we did have fire, put it in bypass. Bypass your filter. Plus the south well, the way I understood it, would still be usable. Right. Yes. But, I mean, Under emergency situations. Right. And if we did that, you know, I mean, we'd you know, have to go back and probably do a sample of well, the chances are we'll be sending out letters and you know, the violations. Yeah. You need extra west well. Too about there actually being a statement that says that there is a 30% loan forgiveness, and I do have the 
the loan manual and that statement in here if anybody would like to see that. But it is, it's not a made up number, it is hard written down in KDHE's manual that there will be a 30% loan forgiveness as for construction costs on compliance issues. It'd be projects that bring uh, non-compliant structures into compliance. There's probably a deadline after acceptance to complete your project. There is a deadline, I'm sure, but I've been trying to flip through and, and find it, but they won't be able to tell us that tomorrow either. Not true. I think Don, Don, it seems like he said 2012. It seemed like to me. I could call William Carr and see if he could. The end of 2012. Yes, I think some for some reason that's what I'm thinking too. Somewhere by 2012. I just, I don't know, for some odd reason, I remember Don saying that. I could be totally wrong. I think my, my main concern too is that if our economy picks up at all, it's going to cost us twice as much to do this thing two or three years down the road if we're not careful. And I don't want to drag our feet now and get by for the next few years and then have to be <coughs> What happens if the economy goes the other way? I'm not sure it can get much worse. No, it can get worse. It's pretty bad. Gotcha. But contractors are hungry. And they're doing things, doing jobs for much less than they would normally, I think, or have been in the past. And I think we need to really take advantage of that or at least think about it. Well, I'd like to see it done in phases myself. I mean, I don't have a problem getting getting a loan for the block, for the storage tanks, the nitrate plant. But I think these tying these two east wells out together and drilling the two new wells, I'll be paid in that. We've got the money. We should just pay for it. We've been collecting money from the water deal here for 20 years, my understanding, at six dollars a, a meter Not or something. Twenty years, no. Since when? Ninety-five, probably ninety-five. But we used a lot of it to. We've just had that. Uh, gosh, I'm trying to think when we paid off that bond issue. Don, don't you remember when that CIP when was it ninety-five? But we used those funds. We weren't collecting it and just letting it sit there. We right. were using those funds to pay, pay our debt. Pay service. off the water project that was done in ninety-six. The electrical plant was done in 95 the first time. But didn't they consolidate a couple no, of water? No, excuse me. The water plant was done. The water, the, the circle, when the circle was down with the big lines, was done in 95 when the first time. 96 is when the construction happened. But it was planned out of 95. But then the power plant bond issue was in either the one, the bottom of the cap, or two. And then yeah. did you refinance those and put them together? Like no, we had the switch gear. We had the switch gear in on part of that. It was all re refinanced. And that thing was all paid off up to your view. Yes. So you made your debt free now as far as revenue was. But we've only have? been collecting and adding to that for the last couple of years. What we have in that fund at this point is 139000 And that's if you want to deplete the whole thing. We just, when we come down to the, uh, uh, the final draft, that Don and his Don and Mike, Mike are going to help us prepare. We just maybe take some cash and buy some material for them to have to pay interest on it for 20 years. I don't know what the interest rate's going to be. You know, it's going to be huge no matter what it is. Yeah, yeah, but why? You got that money for a backup re for for a reason. That's right. Am I right or am I wrong? Oh yeah, you can't use it all. That's right. You never know what's going to pop up. Yes, Don. In any, if you were to go out and buy a bond issue for this, a bonding company. I mean, if you go out on the commercial market and buy a missile bond for this project as it goes to one of the requirements of the missile bond is to have at least.
least one full year's principal payment in a slush fund that's there in case the city does go have has a bad year. Bondholders that have the ability to tap that fund. So when you, when you borrow a million dollars, you're always going to be actually borrowing a million one hundred thousand dollars, and that hundred thousand dollars stays invested until that bond is just completely paid off in that final year that you can put that money back. And that would be any, any revenue bond that you were able to get. It. So I was I'm assuming that a similar provision will be put in with the loan you're going to have. They're going to require a certain amount of uh, what they call reserves to be invested in order to make sure that that loan payment is made. Yeah. So that was just basic municipal finance. Bobby, when you say phases, what do you mean by phases exactly? And what's the benefit of phases? Well, I'd like to see it take the Kenoki well, which is down south, the Swimming Pool well, and put this line in in house from that well around to the industrial park where we're going to build the Cuny wells, and bring the one up south from the Kenoki well up and, and run it in house to the industrial park. Turn around and build the building, and then go to blended water and get good water and water. In. Monitor that for five or six months, whatever. If it looks like it's going to stay there, then maybe we can get by here a year or two without spending this whole three point one million dollar up front. Yeah, but you're going to have to do it in house to do that. There wouldn't be any waste labor or funds. If you want to go in and apply for the for the loan and buy the storage tank and the, and the nitrate plant and leave them set until you're ready for them, I don't have a problem with it. And your second phase would be your actual storage plant and your nitrate plant or your storage tanks and your nitrate plant. And then the third phase would be tying in the two wells out here. Do it. Just spread it out over a little bit of time. Okay. But I don't think we can do out. that. Because of, we've got to, if we're going to take this money, we're going to have to do it by then. What type of time frame are you looking at? Oh, well, like a three year three year project. But do the, do a lot of that stuff in house. It's a whole lot cheaper to do it in house than it is to get an outside contractor to come in. My personal belief being in business. Why do you think I rig my own trucks? If I pay somebody to rig one, it's about hundred fifty thousand dollars. I rig them for sixty thousand. Same exact thing. You're talking about yourself. I'm talking, yeah, I'm just using that for for an example. That's exactly right. We're talking about the whole citizens the same job. I realize that. We're talking it's just about stuff. It's just for this. We're talking about human health. Can't put a price on that. You cannot put a price on that. Can't put a price on a healthy baby. I understand where you're coming from 100%. But what are you going to do when we run out of money? Well, I think the money, I've heard this comment several times. Well, this is for an emergency. So is this an emergency? Yeah, it's an emergency. It's a compliance issue. It's a compliance issue. But it's an emergency as well. But Jill, the, the first part of this uh, looks to me like in-house, we ought to do it for six, seven hundred thousand dollars. When you say in-house, are you meaning city employees? Yes. Okay. So where are you finding six or seven hundred thousand dollars? Where? Uh-huh. When you say we have money to spend We've in. We've got how many hundred thousand dollar CDs in there? You, there's some of those you can't use for that, Bobby. It's for, I mean, it's for everything that's along here, and it's budgeted for certain things. We can't just use it for the project. We have certain funds that we can use that project for, but I don't see six or seven thousand dollars. Do that. You think everything inside of us there is 
from there up is liquid, and everything from there down except the combined use. Well, oh. now, when you look at the funds, let me pass this out. You can't take out of the general fund to use it on this water project or the meter deposits, any of these things. The only thing that you can use, the only funds that you can use this for, you've got the water and light surplus down at the bottom, 141000 and we have the capital improvement for the for the water system, which is number 42, it's just 139,000. Now, water and light, we have quite a bit in there, and there might be some that we can use, but it's not budgeted. We have to, and we can redo a budget, but we don't have a lot of room in there, even though it shows that we have a lot of money, there's operation expenses. So while we have savings, it's all put away so that it can be used for all of these different funds. And by law, we can't use them just whatever we want. We can amend budget to use a, a little bit more out of the water and light. Um, and I would have to really study that. And then if you use both of those, you're depleting your surplus for both water and light. So if we have an um, ice storm or something, do you remember what that last ice storm? No, uh, we, uh, we did get some help. We, we got some people. Yes. That is, has anybody checked in to see if there's any hardship leniencies or grants that can be had? To go along with this. I mean, everything else has hardship funds and that's able to be had. I know that we've looked into some things, and like if you go to um, USDA Rural Development, if you think that the KDAG has strong regulations and stuff, you won't, you can't believe what USDA Isn't that kind of what this is. I mean, KDHE, well, it is a compliance. They have held this money back for us, and they've known all year long, you know, because we had this compliance issue. Um, and that's why it's the lower interest rate. But as far as a grant, if, and when you say a grant, you think about free money, usually there's so many stipulations on that. By the time you get done with it, you, like your wages, you have to pay the data speaking wedges and, and there's just so many regulations that go with some of those grants and uh, rural development is one of the harder ones to stay in compliance with. Um, I don't even know if there's anything there. When we found out we could get this money at this rate, we quit looking because this was I guess we found out the grant money when we was interested in the in energy savings. Yeah. <laughs> that was a big waste. And then we realized we went to a big enough city to get money. And Don's, you know, he does other projects, so he knows what's out there more than I do. Right. But, and so, you know, when he said this was probably our best bet, I didn't argue with him, and I'm not a grant search person. I wouldn't even know where to look. Probably hire somebody at this point. So you said at this interest rate, you might go to the mall? I think it was like 3%. Is there anything in there? Um, it just bases it on some bond rates. But I believe there's a place you can look on KDHE's website, and it's right there if anybody's got internet access. Search it, it's right there on the web page. It's up there. It looks wonderful. I give her a try. Right, go downstairs. Oh, you guys can see it. Let's come to the I just sent 3.1 names to my. Well, 
when you get that 30% forgiveness, though, you're dropping it down to two. It's important. Well, it's still a lot of money for town that isn't growing in population. It's mm -hmm. going down. So, I mean, if we look at our trends, it's not like this is going to stay at 638 meters for 27 years. And once the debt service is paid off, you may not have to continue those rates. Maybe. Maybe. But you may have to just because That's right. you might want to put money away for the next time but, so you already have it and you don't have to. But what I'm saying was the number of meters for the trend is going to go down. So. For every meter that goes off, everybody else has to pick up that one meter, a portion of that one meter throughout the town. And where we can possibly take a loan and do it in phases, you get the 30% forgiveness this year, maybe not next year. But just because you get a 30% percent forgiveness it may not mean that you may not get the loan next year. Why not? It was a shock to me that we looked at a four hundred thousand dollar plan, seven to eight hundred thousand dollar plan, and you, you combine both those plants together, we still can't get by. I don't know how old those plants are. How many meters? Surely, surely those two towns are that close to us, right? Oh, so. I think maybe not. I think those initial. Those, those are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think one was like 300 in those uh, articles that we read. Oh. You guys have carried uh, just a little history to go back to the late 80s, early 90s. The city had the power plant ready to go. We were carrying about $1.2 million in debt back then on the power plant to rebuild the, the water system in '96, and that was almost $500,000. So there have been times when you Revenue bond debt, and you're still way below what you're allowed to have. If, they, if, they, if you weren't within the parameters, the parents would have to say this is what uh, So, I mean, they can't, I mean, if your meters numbers stay approximately the same, I they haven't been significantly lower than what they used to be because we have maybe lost a few houses, but historically we have fairly stable water meters. guaranteeing this is official, but it's the Kansas Public Water Supply Loan Fund, and this is the August rate, but it's 2.72 percent.
and the same way with you, Bobby. If you're going to help any contracting or anything whatsoever, I mean, it's just that I feel like we're going to cut our own throat if we don't go for this money that's available. And then, in two years from now, we get one heck of a rainy season, and then nitrates go right straight down. They definitely don't go up. They go right down to our water system. And if we don't go for this money, here we are back to square one. And then we're not going to be able to pay for it. Save money back for a reason. And if the money's there to get us in compliance, I really don't understand why you would want to go for it. Because our rates are going to go up, citizens. You might as well know that right now. The rates are going to go up. They've got to go up.
switch over to your phone and it's all set and done. Yeah. That's not how it works. I guess from EBH's standpoint, we did put some extra money in there because you don't want to risk saying it's a $2 million project and then it comes in at two and a half and then you're no longer eligible for that loan forgiveness on the, the difference between the two and the two and a half. So we put a large enough number in there to make sure and cover everything that, that would be in there. So if it comes in at $2.5 million, then your loan forgiveness would be good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think this is why we're paying them to do what they're doing, is to give us the best advice possible. That's why they're the experts. That's how I see it. I mean, they're, they do this every day of their lives. I mean, they know what's out there. They know the... I just don't know why we can't put our trust in them. They're not out to screw us. Which is what I think the opinion might be. Well, they're saying, I'm just telling you, if, if you have somebody bid on a job and it comes they bid a job, it's going to hit the bid. There ain't anybody that bids a job that goes way under the bid. If they want the job, they bid their lowest price. Okay. If they're competing, the bids get competitive. You I'm not, I don't think it'll come to 3.1 million. I could, I guess I could very well be wrong. I know one person that bid on the job one time and came, came in well under the bid. And that was my father. So don't tell me that people will not come underneath the bid. Construction. 